Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are we getting on? Welcome to a brand new camp build, and we're down in the Cranberry Bog today. Thought we'd go somewhere a little different. And I stumbled across this very, very cool looking log dam. I had a little bit of space underneath it. I thought we'd initially make a good place for a kind of hidden camp. Not really hidden in the end result, but a little out of sight. And I'm quite pleased with how this looks. So let's jump in and take a look, shall we? Okay, so as I say, we're down in the Cranberry Bog. See, we are not far into the area there. Just a little bit to the northwest of Watoga here. And we've got Appalachian Antiques pretty much due south here. A little bit off. Right next to Superior Sunset Farm, which is the easiest place to find it from. And you've got Huntersville Foundation over there. So, nice little spot in the Cranberry Bog. Bit of a nightmare to get decent weather here. <laughs> Constant battle to find some nice clear weather for the footage, but there we go. So, as I say, we're going to build underneath here, and reasonably simple build in the end, this one. But uh, there's a couple of bits that uh, require a little bit of technique, so take a look at those when we get to them. The first things first under here, we're going to get this lined up with basically where the ground starts to narrow quite rapidly here. Which is going to be the main sort of guide point of the build. Start here. Get three foundations in here. Would have liked this one here to clip in on the other side a little bit more than it does. I'm going to try and adjust it a bit, but got it as far over as we possibly can. Fortunately, it's a bit finicky about doing that. <laughs> Joys of building this close to water, of course. Right to left, right and centre. You can see I can't quite get this to snap in. I think it's those roots more than the ground, but nonetheless, it's being awkward, so we'll nudge it back a little bit. Keep it as far over as we can so that the gap is as tightly closed as possible. A little bit further. Hmm. We might have been a bit further left the first time actually looking at that. Oh well. <laughs> so, basic part of the foundation in and we'll build out from here. So, we'll try this out as we go, figure out what works. We're going to have a couple of different levels in here just because we need the clearance for our head. You can see you can't get a foundation in that back left corner once I can on the right. So we're going to end up pulling that one on the right out and basically having it two, two foundations wide. It works well with the space that way, so not too much of a problem. I don't want to go too far back either here because I do want it to be sort of underneath and somewhat concealed. So don't want it to stick out too far. That should do the job nicely. Some half walls and some roofs on. I want it sticking up too much. Once again, the roof doesn't want to go through those logs. I think it's more the ground, actually. The roofs are quite reasonable about snapping through the logs, which came as something of a surprise, but it does work quite well, so that's cool. And one of the key points to be aware of here, we snap the roofs on, is that if you build too low, you're too close to the water, apart from the fact you'll hit your head on the logs above, you also won't be able to place anything down on top of the foundations, because the game will think you're trying to place it in water. So you need a little bit of clearance there. Uh, putting in the walls should actually give you a reasonable amount of information as to whether or not that's working because if you're too close to the water it won't let you snap into the foundations but it's also worth testing whether or not you can place anything down so I've got some stored workbenches we'll put that to the test now there we are just about high enough if we're any lower it would not allow us to put that down so we know we're in the right place take this little bit of excess off the side now it's probably a good time to take that foundation off although I forgot and came back to it later so we'll close up the gaps while we can. That one worked astoundingly well. I couldn't believe that went through there just like that. But it did. Unfortunately, the ground on this side is causing a bit of a problem. And we can't do it on that side. So we'll come up with a different solution in a bit. That's basically half the build done, to be honest. Just as far as the structure goes. So out the front here, we're going to need to go down a little bit. Because we've got less headroom. Also, because the ground is narrowing. Or the gap between the two pieces of ground is narrowing. We're going to have to go to a single foundation width here. So, as we've got the gap in the middle there, I can't quite snap this on. Oh, I can't snap it on at all, in fact. So, I tried here to see if I could squeeze two foundations in, just to fill the gap a little better, but unfortunately it doesn't want to play ball on that front. Unfortunately, moving over that way is not going to help at all. See, it's uh, way too far from the edge there. So, we'll line this up in the middle instead. That one out of the way. He needs the centre line of the foundation here just to line up with the gap between the two, two foundations we've already got in place. A little bit off there. 
about close enough. Quite as straight as it could be, perhaps, but pretty close. So, next move is to figure out how we're going to pass from one foundation to the other. Now, you can just push them up against each other and just use the sort of climbing feature, I suppose, at the edge of the foundation and just sort of travel right up it. But I'm going to put some stairs on. To do this, though, as I want to snap the foundation through the wooden stairs and have them in the right place, it's going to be a bit problematic. You can see it, and put foundation, the stairs rather on one side of the foundations, but not on the other. I did try a few different types, and no, that's the only one that works. So, I'm going to have to make some adjustments so we can get this in the middle. So, for those who saw the log cabin build the other week, you'll be familiar with this technique, but if you haven't, it's a little clearer to see there, so you may want to check that video out. But, the general idea is we're going to use a set of floating stairs, so they're not actually snapped onto a foundation, uh, to make sure we've got them in the right place, if I don't get stuck on the log down over my head. There we go. So we're going to position this foundation in where we want the stairs to snap. Try and get it leveled up with the foundations at the back. We're actually a little far forward here, as we'll see in a moment. Find the staircase. Okay. So, when we come to check this... <laughs> I've forgotten that uh, there's something else I need to do there. Try and get around here, just see if I've not got enough headroom. Which is one of the reasons, as I say, we need to have those a little lower. We'll take these two foundations out. The walls will float just fine because they're supported by roofs. We'll snap a second one in, and this is what will allow us to take that first foundation out and have the stairs basically floating. So that way we can have them across the gap between two foundations. But we are way too far forward yet, so we're going to nudge this a little further back. Is it sinking down? We'll have to push it up a bit again. Snap this next one on. Get it snapped to the right bit. A little bit too far forward still there, so a little bit further back needed. Maybe a tiny little bit too far there, but it works, so we won't worry too much about it. There's usually a gap between the stairs and the foundations anyway once you snap them on, so being a little too far back is not such a bad thing. But, let's get this foundation snapped in eventually. Yeah, man, play ball. There we go. You can see we've got a little bit of overlap there, but it doesn't really matter for the moment. There's leaving that on there. I remember to take the right foundation off. Oh wait, I haven't put the stairs on yet. Okay, stairs on. <laughs> Wrong foundation off. <laughs> Pull that back. Okay, take the foundation to snap the stairs off. The second one will allow us to do that. Now we have our floating staircase. We can put the floors back in where we had them before. Just get these in and we'll adjust them afterwards. It'll be easier that way. As you see, lines up nicely with the foundation. So we've got our staircase in place. Not technically snapped or anything, but does the job. Now we drop this one down in, in front of it, and went past nice and smoothly from the lower section up to the main part of the, what will be the house. Stick that wall back in. Still can't get one in there though. There we go, main structure is more or less in place. So here I built a little kind of entranceway that I really wasn't happy with the final look of. It looks too boxy and frankly quite ugly on the front of the building, so you'll be seeing a fair bit of it, so let me quickly show you what I did. But uh, I changed it come time for the tour, so you'll see the final result there, but you'll have already seen a little bit of it. But, logs once again being very forgiving about snappy walls through them, so there's always a bonus. I prefer a more closed off front approach, and certainly an option here. So yeah, I put the roof on, snapped in just fine. Ended up putting a second one behind it, in fact, and that works as well. This front area is going to need a little bit of work as well. But we'll hop inside, so we can more or less ignore that structure that I've put on the front. Drop this tire wall in. It'll block up the gap reasonably well, give a bit more interesting angle on the side as well, which is cool. It's a little too small, which is unfortunate. But we'll manage. Get that in as far as we can. It's a little too short as well, so... A few more tyres on the top, just plug that gap up. This is for a sense of completion rather than uh, any real need. Oh, that'll loop. These are reasonably cooperative. I have to adjust them a little bit in the decoration phase and put a second layer on there, but... They're quite reasonable about snapping through the logs above as well, so that's all very helpful. Normally I try and avoid, excuse the nuke, 
Normally I try and avoid having too much clipping going on and stuff like this, but in this case it just kind of fits with the build. It's supposed to be built into the log dam, so... Not perfect, but we'll forgive it. Attention, citizens. Nuclear strike imminent. Just close this little gap up here. Ground's been a little bit awkward there, but we'll also get that lined up. Should close it off reasonably well. Not strictly speaking necessary again, but looks a little more complete. And that is basically the structure. So, a little decoration later, and we'll jump onto the tour. There we go. We did have a little battle out front here, trying to get it to look good. Sort of not overdone, but also interesting. So the decoration was a bit challenging there, but reasonably happy with how it came out. Take a closer look in just a moment. See, unless you're right on top of the camp, you're going to have a hard time spotting it, even with the back end of it here exposed and the uh, water purifier on the back there. Put a couple of generators on the roof. Pity they're blue, unfortunately, but these are the silent ones, so much better. You can pick up those Voltec generators if they reappear in the atomic shop, I highly recommend. Unless, of course, the noisy generators don't bother you. But, fairly simple out the back. Didn't really want to do a great deal out here. The water purifier is more for convenience than anything else. Plenty of room around this build if you did want to put a little sort of farm or something like that in as well, but as I say, the idea was to have it kind of concealed, so I didn't want anything too overt at the top. And do the lights at the front kind of ruin that effect, but they do give it a more complete look, so. Swings and roundabouts. Head around the front, have a little look inside. I extended this front out a little bit so we can get in a bit more easily. Makes it look a bit more interesting. Put a chair out there, do a bit of fishing if you'd like to. Not switched on at the moment, but a couple of vendors out the front. As you can see, I've gone for half walls and sloped walls instead of that structure I previously had on the front. A gate that was reasonably cooperative about just dropping in there. And a confined space, but we managed to put everything we really need in here. Still having mixed feelings about whether or not the curtains were a good move, but it kind of allows you to divide off the bedroom a little bit. It's a bit of a tight squeeze to get between them, but you know, something different rather than just a big, uh, obnoxious wall. Yep, slide in there, get a look from this angle as well. Oh, most of my fast snap masks on display there. I've got a few duplicates still tucked away, but... Need to liven the place up a little bit. So, relatively simple, small build, but provides a nice little player home, and kind of nice and tucked out of sight, if you do want it out of sight. Mind you, putting player vending out there kind of spoils that, I suppose. <laughs> Inviting everybody to come by via the map, so... But, my character does need to make a few caps again. <laughs> Have a little look around in the evening. Hmm. Lighting in the evening is not perfect. As I said countless times before, I still want more. Lights that have the same sort of effect as these oil lamps, but are not quite so huge and bulky, but we may do with what we've got. I'll back through a little entranceway and have a look around the inside. Reasonably warm and homely. Didn't want anything too over the top. I have actually put some track lights at the top, because it was still very, very dingy in here. But yeah, looks pretty solid, I think. Over some of the brick-textured wallpapers there, just to keep it with the natural textures, but they look better than the wood that the interior did, so like that look as well. So, do hope you enjoyed that one ladies and gents. If you did, please do hit those buttons for me. It was very much appreciated. Social media links down in the description, along with a link to the merch store if you'd like to take a look at that. And if you're really enjoying the content, please do consider becoming a channel member as well. The support is very, very much appreciated and hugely, hugely helpful. Do keep an eye out for the live streams. Going to head on and play a little bit more Fallout this evening, and we're playing Deus Ex as well. For now, thank you very much for watching, and I look forward to speaking to you all very, very soon.